welcome back. Today we are going to dive into using one tool in Lightroom to completely change an image. And we're gonna use it to try and create a cinematic uh, effect as well. So I have this photo of a street then and we're gonna take it from looking like this over here to looking like this one over here. And the only kind of change that we're really gonna be doing with a lot of this is just using the curve tool. Now the curve tool is really powerful in Lightroom and often used wrong or ignored completely. And instead a lot of people dive for the basic edit panel over here. What the curve tool is essentially doing is allowing you to control contrast across different parts of the image. So what the contrast tool over here is doing is basically applying contrast to the entire image. So if you look at the histogram up at the top, as I pull all the way across here, everything's flattened to the left there. As I pull this way, they're kind of leveled out a bit more. And you can already see this sort of faded uh, to really defined look. But when you're dealing with the contrast, you're also actually dealing with saturation. As you're pushing up the contrast of something, you are pushing up the saturation as well. And that might not always be wanted. Now I tend to avoid this slider and I try and get all of the contrast edits out of using the curve tool or the basic panel. So. Let's go down, reset our curve tool that we've got going on and see if we can get this faded look. So here's the curve tool down here then. Now, if you're just using it for the first time, it may be defaulted up to this one. And as we move through it, we can make certain changes um, to go through them. We got the parametric curve, we've got the point curve here, and then we've got the individual colors. So this is going to be dealing with all of the colors, everything that's in the image. This is going to do with certain channels. And you can see, as I've gone through each of those, there is something on the ball. If I toggle the curve off, you can see the big change that it's made to the image. It's not only just taken away some of the definition, it's flattened the image out a bit more. Uh, it's also taken away quite a lot of the color in it. If I turn this back on, you can see we've got this blue tone that's just snuck its way back in. So the curves is not just for dealing with contrast. We can actually start to create some colors and create some different styles in here. But we want to try and get this cinematic look. So let's have a look at how we might do that. I'm going to come onto here then and I'm going to reset everything that we've got on this. There we go. So first thing I'll do then, I'm going to deal with uh, the actual curve itself. Now, the standard thing to do when dealing with contrast is to make three points and kind of make an S curve. And that's with your shadows being down here and your blacks. As I pull that down, I'm going to darken those bits and I'm going to increase kind of basically the point between the two of them. As I go over here, I would then pull this one up as well. Uh, and increase sort of the, some of the contrast up in the highlights there. Now, the further I go down on that, the more I get, but it, it doesn't look very cinematic. When we think about cinematic, you've got that bit of a faded style in there, and we're gonna achieve this by going through the curves. So how might I do this then? Basically, if we go down to the very end of the blacks, we can lift this up as much as we want, and the further we lift this, we start to get that faded look come onto the image there then. We don't want to go too far, but it's taking away the notion of a true black and pushing it more towards like the grace and into like that matte black kind of finish. So I'm going to pull that down there. And if I was to lift my shadows as well, that may also add to that sort of faded look that's going on. Uh, there's nothing wrong with actually pulling some of these down like this. So I do get some of that contrast in the shadows, but lifting the blacks at this end. It again comes down to what you want out of the photo. So I could leave it like this. This does make it a bit brighter. Or I could pull down, still keep some of the contrast there and just raise this. I can make as many points though as I want down this line. So if I want to darken these black bits a bit more, I can do, or maybe I just want to raise up here. Now I find if I raise before the area and I put in a point here, this really helps to build some of that contrast that's going on. So if I toggle on and off with that, you can see some of these blue tones are already starting to come into the image there then. I can also choose to pull my midpoints down a little bit if I want, and that's just gonna pull this towards that side a bit more. If I go up, you can see I get more of the highlights involved. Uh, again, I want this sort of cinematic feel, so I'm actually just gonna drop this ever so slightly. So it's not too different to the S curve that we've got going on but I'm just raising what I've got down here with the blacks and making some extra points. I can choose to do the same up here then with the highlights area. If I pull that down, 
I'm going to lose some of that kind of glow. And when I'm doing this cinematic, I tend to pull both of these down and then I just play around with where this extra point is that I've got, how I want to raise it up, basically how faded do I want my image to go. Further up there, the more faded I'm going to get. It's a balance that you need to strike and it's completely up to you as well. Now once you've done that, you can then go through the individual channels and you can start to sneak in some contrast in some different areas. I'm primarily going for these sort of blues and oranges here, so if I go across to this slider, I can do the same thing, I can make an S curve and it's almost like split tone and I wanna push things into certain areas. So I'm gonna pull this one down and what that actually does is it introduces a bit of yellow into the shadows there. If I pull this one up, then I get a bit more of the blues. Now you might think, well, that looks terrible at the minute, but that's because I'm going to go through each of these channels and I'm going to do a similar thing. And all this is doing is just adding a little bit more contrast in to the different areas there. So you see that one's made the biggest difference because now I've gone across all three of the colors. So you can get very creative with this, but it takes a lot of playing around with. If I want to get more of that sort of deep green feel there, I can pull this down a bit further. Again, I can make as many points as I want with this. So maybe I want to go for that really dark green feeling down at the bottom there. And I want to take away from it in the highlights. Point is you can do a lot and you can get yeah very, very creative with all these aspects. They require going back and forward and doing sort of a lot of tweaking so you kind of get the color in a place that you're happy with on things there. And then you can always come back to this point here and start raising and lowering things. So maybe now that I've introduced that extra contrast in, maybe now I might just raise these points and get that extra sort of faded feeling. Basically what I'm trying to say is as you go across you know, each of these channels you will find yourself having to go back and just make different edits and that's absolutely fine there. It's about getting that final image that you want as you toggle on and off with it. So I still like the mids like lowered I think a bit there. I'm not too keen on them shining out because I want that faded cinematic look. But I did raise these a little bit more. I quite like this... Uh, it's like a deep green blue tone going on in there, which is really great. The final thing I'll do is I'll come over to the, I cannot say this word. Why can I not say this word today? The parametric, parametric. I can't say this for some reason, but I will come over to this and this is just like some sort of like type global edits that I'll do on this bit here. Usually what I use this for is to recover when I've gone too far. Or, or do things I was too scared to do in the other ones. So I'm just going to pull those up a bit further. But if I pull that right the way up, you can see I'm just fully lightening that out. So again, I'm just adding to that faded look a little bit more. If I pull my highlights all the way up, it's not doing a great deal. So that's fine. I'm going to keep that there. But the biggest effect is down in these shadows. So I could go higher. I can bring it lower. I'm just going to strike that balance of pulling the darks down but raising the shadows up. And there's a lot of experimentation to go around here, but certainly when you're trying to create this um, like cinematic kind of look, you can just achieve it purely with what's going on on the curves here then. Toggle that off. Very bright sort of image going on. I have already sucked out a lot of the colors in it, but it's uh, it just looks like a flat taken image. Bring the curves in. I've completely changed around not only just like the color but the lighting of it too and yeah as i work through all my other different edits on here i will go back and i will always try and control contrast from the curves instead of using this button up here so that's just very quickly because what happened if i completely if i go the other way around and i raise my shadows then and I raise these out in the other way. Again, you can see I get this faded look. So there are different types of cinematic sort of styles you can get. This one's a bit more lighter. If I pull these down, then I bring in that little bit more like darkness feel to it. Let's create a different point there. Yeah, if I pull this down, I get a little bit more of the darker feel. But what's really driving the faded look with all of this is just raising down this end and lowering up at this end. 
creates a massive difference and you are just, just squishing what is black and white and you're just pulling them in a little bit more. Further up you go, you are gonna get that different faded look. So, very quick one there on just using the curves tool. It's a very powerful tool. You can get a lot out of this. I will go into deeper on a different video with all of how you might apply this to different things. But for the cinematic effects, um, I find it's great to try and achieve this look just by raising and lowering different points here. You can start off with that generic S curve, um, see if you like what it's doing to the image, raise and lower your points um, at the very edges for the blacks and whites there. And then yeah, just try pulling them up and down. You don't have to stick with that generic S curve. Pull them up and down and see, does that strike your eye of that's what I'm going for with my image. This works quite nicely on the buildings, but it'd be interesting to see what it looks like if we we're doing some portraits there. Just remember, as you're going across these different channels, it is very delicate point work. So the slightest movement I'll do on these points here will have a big effect on the color overall. Don't worry once you've just made one adjustment and it's not producing the results you want, go through all of the channels and make the different adjustments and you can control how much of that contrast you're kind of putting in on these different colors there then. Sometimes you may not need it, sometimes you may just actually be after sneaking a little bit more of a blue tone into the shadows, that's fine as well. It's just entirely dependent on the photo you're dealing with. Just when you get down to the curves, don't always go for that generic feel of just the S curve and move away from just using this panel down here. Or equally, if you're only using this panel, try going back once you've done your edit and just having a play with the different regions down here. So I hope that helps you understand what the curves can do a little bit more, but also how we can get this uh, bit of like a cinematic faded look through from just using the curves tools. You can take it as far as you want. Some people will like it, some people won't, but that's that's the great thing about what we're doing here. It's entirely your choice, it's your photo. If you like what you've seen, please do subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.